Dear students, welcome to all of you in this video lesson of B.A. first year of Maulana Azad National Urdu University, Hyderabad. Today, we will have a discussion on language policy of India. This subtopic is prescribed in the first unit the introduction to English language teaching of the course Pedagogy of English for both regular and distance more students of BA. In this video lesson, we will talk about the constitutional provisions regarding language policy, the three language formula and the contribution of different commissions and committees in shaping the language policy of India. This video lesson will enable you to know the constitutional provisions regarding language policy of India, to understand the three language formula and to know the role of different commissions and committees in framing the language policy of the country. <music> Students, before the independence of India, English was an official language. It was the language of administration, courts, banks, trade and industry and medium of instruction in schools, colleges and universities. So it occupied a privileged place in India. But with the attainment of independence in 1947, the position of English in our educational as well as in our national life came to be seriously questioned. Some national leaders supported English, while some were committed to drive away English from India. Many educationists and national leaders came to the conclusion that English should be replaced by one Indian language. But however, all of them were quite reluctant to drive away English from India, owing to its worldwide importance. See Rajagopal Charya, Mahatma Gandhi, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru supported English, whereas some leaders were advocating the Hindi language to be adopted as the national and official language of India. But it was seriously opposed by some states of South India. India, being a multilingual country, was in need of a language policy because it was a sentimental issue for its people. The forefathers of this country dealt this issue wisely through constitutional provisions and tried to address the diverse language needs of the country. The constitution of India was drafted by constituent assembly. Dr. Rajendra Prasad, the first president of India, was the chairperson of constituent assembly, whereas Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was the chairperson of drafting committee. Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, the first Minister for Education, was among the prominent members of Constituent Assembly. It took almost three years to draft the Constitution. It was adopted by the Constituent Assembly of India on 26 November 1949 and became effective on 26 January 1950. So let's know some of the constitutional provisions that define the language policy of our country. <music> Article 343 of the Constitution of India is regarding the official language of the Union. The official language of the Union shall be Hindi in Devanagari script. The form of numerals to be used for the official purposes of the Union shall be the international form of Indian numerals. Clause 2. Notwithstanding anything in Clause 1, for a period of 15 years from the commencement of this constitution, the English language shall continue to be used for all the official purposes of the Union for which it was being used immediately before such commencement, provided that the President may, during the said period, by order authorize the use of the Hindi language in addition to the English language and of the Devanagari form of numerals in addition 
to the international form of Indian numerals for any of the official purposes of the Union. Notwithstanding anything in this article, Parliament may by law provide for the use after the set period of 15 years of the English language or the Devanagari form of numerals for such purposes as may be specified in the law. So, in article 343, Hindi is declared as official language of the Union and the status of English language as an official language is extended for 15 years. But still today, English remained the official language of the Union because of its national and international importance. Then article 350A of the constitution is regarding facilities for instruction in mother tongue at primary stage. It shall be the endeavor of every state and of every local authority within the state to provide adequate facilities for instruction in the mother tongue at the primary stage of education to children belonging to linguistic minority groups and the president may issue such directions to any state as he considers necessary or proper for securing the provision of such facilities. Article 350A advocated the use of mother tongue at primary level of education and assured the welfare of linguistic minorities through education. Today, we have lakhs of primary and secondary schools run by municipal corporations, zilla parishas, state governments and minority institutions where medium of instruction is regional language such as Marathi, Telugu, Urdu, Malayalam, etc. Comes Article 351 of the Constitution which is regarded directive for development of the Hindi language. It shall be the duty of the union to promote the spread of the Hindi language, to develop it so that it may serve as a medium of expression for all the elements of the composite culture of India and to secure its enrichment. By assimilating without interfering with its genius, the form, style and expressions used in Hindustani and in other languages of India specified in the 8th schedule and by drawing wherever necessary or desirable for its vocabulary primarily on Sanskrit and secondarily on other languages. So, article 351 advocates the promotion of Hindi language with its Sanskrit base of vocabulary. Today, we have Government of India's Department of Official Language, Mahatma Gandhi International Hindi University, Vardha, Central Hindi Directorate and many other government and private organizations that are serving the cause of promotion of Hindi language. These articles or their sub clauses clearly shows that the country has given due importance to English, Hindi and all other regional languages concerning their international, national and regional importance respectively. Kothari Commission 1964 to 1966 precisely introduced a three language formula that advocates the first language to be studied must be the mother tongue or the regional language. In Hindi speaking states, the second language will be some other modern Indian language or English and in non-Hindi speaking states, the second language will be Hindi or English. In Hindi speaking states, the third language will be English or a modern Indian language not studied as the second language. In non-Hindi speaking states, the third language will be English or a modern Indian language not studied as the second language. In our country, states or provinces were established on the basis of languages. Therefore, language identity and pride is a very sentimental issue in our country. Hence, Kothari Commission advisably presented the three language formula to address the regional, national and international needs of language and brought all the provinces on a common platform 
regarding language policy. Today, most of the provinces of the country follow three language formula in their educational system. But now in most of the states of India, English is taught as a compulsory subject from standard one to graduation. Today, Indians learn English as a second language. The National Policy on Education 1986 and its Revision Program of Action 1992 presented a detailed report regarding three language formula, improvements in the linguistic competencies at the different stages of education, provision of facilities for the study of English and other foreign languages and development of Hindi language as a link language. The policy emphasized the use of regional languages as medium of instruction in higher education. The report quotes, the energetic development of Indian languages and literature is a sign qua non for educational and cultural development. Unless this is done, the creative energies of the people will not be released, standards of education will not improve, knowledge will not spread to the people and the gulf between the intelligentsia and masses will remain if not widened further. The regional languages are already in use as media of education at the primary and secondary stages. Urgent steps should now be taken to adopt them as media of education at the university stage. Today, we have Central Institute of Indian Language Institutions like National Council for Promotion of Urdu Language, language universities like Maulana Azad National Urdu University to provide higher and vocational education. The program of action 1992 in chapter 18, Developing Languages, observed that the implementation of the three language formula had been less than satisfactory on account of all the languages are not being taught compulsorily at the secondary stage. A classical language has been substituted for a modern Indian language in some states. No concrete provision yet exists for the teaching of South Indian languages in the Hindi speaking states. Duration for compulsory study of three languages varies. Competency levels to be achieved by learners of each language have not been precisely specified. So, Program of Action 1992 suggested these recommendations for the effective implementation of the three language formula. Decision by states, state boards of secondary education to make the study of three languages compulsory at the secondary stage. Prescription of the class from and the duration for which three languages will be taught. Specification of objectives of teaching different languages. The state boards of secondary education will be asked to take uniform decisions in line with the recommendations of NCERT and CBSE in these matters. Specification of levels of language proficiency to be reached in respect of each language. Language institutions under the ministry like Kendriya Hindi Sansthan Central Institute of Indian Languages, Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages in consultation with NCRT would be asked to prescribe minimum competencies to be achieved. Program of Action 1992 also suggested a plan of action to implement these recommendations. The policy suggested promoting Hindi as a link language these recommendations. Every effort should be made to promote the development of Hindi. In developing Hindi as a link language, due care should be taken to ensure that it will serve as provided for in Article 351 of the Constitution as a medium of expression for all the elements of the composite culture of India. The establishment in non-Hindi states of colleges and other institutions of higher education which use Hindi as the medium of education should be encouraged. Another noteworthy language policy can be seen in National Curriculum Framework 2005. In its third chapter, curricular areas, school stages 
and assessment sheds light on language education in the country and suggested following guidelines. Language teaching needs to be multilingual not only in terms of number of languages offered to children but also in terms of evolving strategies that would use the multilingual classroom as a resource. Home languages of children should be the medium of learning in schools. If a school does not have provisions for teaching in the child's home language at the higher levels, primary school education must still be covered by the home languages. It is imperative that we honor the child's home language. Children will receive multilingual education from the outset. The three language formula needs to be implemented in its spirit promoting multilingual communicative abilities for a multilingual country. Next, in the non-Hindi speaking states, children learn Hindi. In the case of Hindi speaking states, children learn a language not spoken in their area. Sanskrit may also be studied as a modern Indian language in addition to these languages. At later stages, the study of classical and foreign languages may be introduced. And the last recommendation is home language means mother tongue of children. National Curriculum Framework 2005 asserted the importance of multilingualism and mentioned that multilingualism which is constitutive of the identity of a child and a typical feature of the Indian linguistic landscape must be used as a resource, classroom strategy and a goal by a creative language teacher. This is not only the best use of a resource readily available, but also a way of ensuring that every child feels secure and accepted and that no one is left behind on account of his or her linguistic background. In this way, Article 343 Article 350A, Article 351, Kothari Commission of India, the National Policy on Education 1986, Program of Action 1992 and National Curriculum Framework 2005 address the diverse needs of Indian society where all the languages were given their due importance and brought unity in diversity in our country. Dear students, in this way, we have taken a short account of language policy of our country, the constitutional provisions regarding language policy in India, the three language formula, and how different commissions and committees contributed to the language policy of India. You can read more about this topic from the books and other resources you are watching on your screen. Let's meet some other time with some other important and interesting topic from your syllabus. Till then, goodbye.